little bit about uh, Space Award Oil. Uh, it was founded in 94 to, to act as a small world uh, reseller, so named Small World Finland. And then we went to Nasdaq 96 with, uh, together with Small World. 2000, GE bought the whole uh, Small World, so we became part of GE. We bought ourselves out from GE <laughs> uh, in the end of 2002. And, and uh, in the beginning of 2004, we became FME reseller officially. We had been sort of involved earlier. But. And uh, we started last year also to, to, to sell uh, spatial business systems uh, plugins, so, which is presented here as well. Okay, uh, related to safe software, we are doing uh, FME sales product support, training, consultancy, uh, some development, not much, but some development as well. We have uh, developed a couple of uh, uh, models. And, and uh, the customers are mainly in Finland, but also in Estonia and Russia. So we have here our Russian customer one and, and some Finnish customers as well. Yes, thank you for joining. <laughs> uh, our motto is that working should be fun, at least as fun as possible. And with FME, it often is. And, and it's not just a saying. I tell people a lot that like 10, 15, 20 years ago, GIS was fun. You could go to a customer and ask, what are your problems? And then they told, what are their problems? We could, we could model it, we could show it. That was fun. Now GIS systems are huge, ready applications, everything integrated and so on. So it's not really that much fun anymore. But FME is still fun. We can do the same. You can go to customer, uh, ask what are your problems, and then we can show how to solve it. Maybe immediately or anyways, explain how you could do it. Uh, then about Affecto, the company. They, this is more official as this big listed company on the Finnish uh, Nasdaq Helsinki. So uh, it's a Finnish company. Their main location is in Finland, but they are strongly in, in, in Norway, Sweden, Denmark, and Baltics as well. Net sales 133 million um, last year, which is just a little bit more than ours. We are only six people, <laughs> so, and they are 1,100. And in Finland, they have a divided business so that they have this information management solutions and Kartakeskus, which is the GIS business. Kartakeskus means like a map center, so which is also our customer. But then the, to the topic, um, Geo Archive, what it is. It, first of all, it's been developed by Affecto to, uh, to our customers in Estonia. And what you should remember from that is that it manages the whole survey data process aiming that uh, map and our network data is up to date, it's accurate, reliable, according to the rules, whatever the rules are, and anything else you might wish for. So, meaning that you can configure, you can add on, on things. It's meant for uh, basically to anyone who is related to surveys and that kind of stuff, so local authorities, and, and other companies engage in, in geodesics, so surveying companies, and so on. And it's used for gathering and archiving geodesic surveys and, and uh, distributing map data based on this to the users of, of uh, GeoArchive. And it includes processing of geodesic plans, executive survey drawings like as built uh, surveys, cadastral surveys, uh, data manage other the data management jobs. There are two implementations uh, at Elion, which is Telia Sonera, if you know, pretty big uh, telecommunications company. Um, they are our small world customer, but they also are using FME. And, and these are a little bit different. The city of Tartu is then a city which is more or less managing the survey process for the, for the map data. 
but Elion they are using that to manage uh, network updates. And they have extract, translate, uh, and load process, IGL process, and and uh, everything is strongly tied with the data model and, and the mapping rules. So you get the data from the field. You have a small word based application in the other end with a with a data model and, and so on. Okay, and everything is based on Estonian national standards, which is something important. Some components of the solution, um, there's workflow management, so whatever is happening in the survey is, is tracked uh, with this solution. And, and uh, from a technical point of view, it's using FME, um, mainly reading uh, microstation BGN files and, and Autodesk uh, files in. And uh, the mapping rules, they are in the database. And validation tests, which are, of course, an important role in here, they are using the same rules. There is filtering approach so that people see only that data, what they need to see at a certain point their work and the workflow uh, and very important thing is auditing so everything is tracked what's happening with the data and it's checked that it's ready to go forward or not and so on and then you can export uh, data uh, on demand into cat files so here's the data flow um, the upper left corner you see the data coming from the field it's analyzed. Is it according to the rules that you know you order work? You set rules that the data should be like this. It's it's uh, analyzed. If it's not as it should be, then it's sent back uh, with a report that hey you should fix this data. And then you can load it when it's it's been fixed. And the motivator for fixing everything is right here. <laughs> so. And as you can see, let's see if the laser is visible. Yes, whatever is solid here, that's automatic. And if it's, it's not solid, it's semi-automatic. So this is automatic process. There's input archive uh, with the database. It can be different database. I think in the other case, it's Oracle. And in the other customer case, it's uh, Postgre writes to it. And then uh, there's intermediate database uh, where data is loaded automatically. Again, that can be different databases. In the other case, I think that's again uh, Postgre, PostGIS, and in the other case, it's small world. And then here you need manual uh, acceptance, so, so sort of a semi-automatic. Someone has to accept that this data is now correct. And then it's going to the target uh, database and it's accepted and ma it's made uh, visible to everyone and bills are paid. And this trick in here, uh, it improved the data quality dramatically in this end. When you, you were not paid, when you, it wasn't correct, so all of a sudden the quality improved a lot. It's database of real world objects, I'm not sure how, uh, in an, in a small world environment, people are always talking about real world objects, but it's sort of modeling the real world, how it is. So we are modeling real world objects. And it's managing all the attribute data, geometries of, of different object classes, like buildings, roads, like road class, your road itself, road sections belong to your road, water, geodetic marks, networks, whatever different networks are. And, and of course, this can be expanded to to include whatever uh, your problem is. Data model is dynamic, and, and as I said, everything is stored in the database. But you can, you can modify the data model and, and uh, do the mappings and, and so on as you wish, as you know you can do with FME. Uh, some common details of the implementations. So the processing of geodetic surveys and uh, some other data management jobs, those are common to both. Like initiation of, of the survey, accepting or uh, rejecting the survey, registering everything and so on. So 
whatever you do in the survey, that's tracked. It said uploading of, of the geodetic surveys from these um, microstation Autodesk formats. And what is important is the validation of, of the data. That's, that's one of the key, key things. And also that now on, on this case, these are based on Estonian legislation, but of course it can be whatever. It can be your own, own rules, company rules, uh, municipality rules, governmental rules, whatever, but uh, you need to have something to base your definitions, your validation. So all that is described in, in FME. So it's it's neat to it's easy to modify and, and so on. A bit more uh, common things. So uh, if you remember the picture with the uh, databases there, so there's the sort of a, a middle layer where data is uploaded, beginning and and it's not visible to everyone before it's accepted. That's one one important thing. And there is tool to, to uh, correct data which is not correct, so you can you can do a little bit in here as well. And and uh, you can browse the map map uh, sort of public uh, accepted data on the GeoArchives map window. We will see that later on. Uh, you can download surveys uploaded file, so everything is stored. Also, of course, the 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 original file that was loaded. So if you need it for something, you can, you can, there's an interface here, you can get to that data and, and download the original file. Or you can uh, download an extract of a map uh, or, well, any data you have on certain area. When, when someone is going to do a survey so they can have uh, the data, what's in the database with them. And here's a mandatory uh, workbench picture. <laughs> it's, this thing has been done as scripts, but Yuri was kind enough to, to do this one, uh, one workbench presentation in here as well so that we get the mandatory <laughs> workbench picture in here. So, so uh, I'm not going into details in here, but uh, most of the work is done by schema mapper. So that's doing most of the work. And what's happening here is that, uh, let's say, the accepted data becomes colored so that you can separate different types of data easily when you are looking at the data. There's an example of that later on. And then if it's not uh, accepted, it's rejected, so then it will be sent back uh, with an error report. There's a tool to, to to search uh, surveys because, well, potentially you can have a huge amount of surveys. So here you can uh, search for your own <coughs> works or, or all the works that are there in different ways. So it gives you an easy access to surveys. I, I don't know if who, who is responsible for surveys or knows how surveys are done in your company or organization or whatever. Does is there one almost hand raised now? So there's another one. So, so how do you manage that you find a survey? Is it file-based system? You have somewhere some kind of file structure someone invented one day and then there are dates and then somehow you then find it there. You if presented on that yesterday. Okay. Good. <laughs> 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 yes, okay, there are good ways. But anyway, this is the way in here. You come here, you, you write something down, and you, you make a query, you get a list of these, and, and then you have access to the survey, and you can see all the related information, including uh, one important thing is sort of scale with sort of a precision class uh, for the data, so you know always how accurate the data is. So, and you can, you can see the whole, whole info in here, so it's easy access to that. But there's another one. This is actually, this is what I like uh, a lot. Someone, it's, yeah, it was the Google guy who said that map will be the new document. And, and this is like the map is the document. Here you can see surveys uh, done on a map. These two 
for example, here they are overlapping, and so on. So, so and there's one, and I guess that you can have different colors based on, on the job task type, and so on. So you can easily see what kind of surveys have been done and where. And if something is happening right now, so maybe you can give an ad additional task to someone uh, who is already going there in the field. Or there's, you can go and look at the job uh, work task. That is, has it happened already, or is it just something that is, is has been uh, started? And there's the uh, map window for editing the data, doing some edits on it. And the uh, Sample input. So here you can see the, the coloring. Existing network, which isn't a lot in here, uh, that's the existing part. So that's green, and whatever is red is new built. That's what has been surveyed, measured on the field. So you can easily separate these two, and for example, check that it is connecting in here. Something about the benefits. The first one is very, very clear. Benefit, increased processing speed from, from uh, three to five weeks to two to three days. That's huge saving. Of course, it's not just working heavily three to five weeks. But anyway, speeding the process to be much more, more dense. And what is very, very important is the traceability and increased reliability. So everyone can rely that the, whatever data has been going through the system, it's valid and you can trust on that and you can see the accuracy of the data. <coughs> and it's consistency throughout the organization. So everyone has to do things the same way. There is no other way. There's one way of doing things. Either you do it, the, do it that way or you can do your job. And also it gives a chance for uh, workload uh, balancing. So if someone is overstressed with work or gets sick or whatever, you can see what has been behind this and that person and then you, you can move it to other, other people. Okay. Uh, another benefit, which is for every FME user very clear is that you can view different uh, data sources at the same time, but it's not clear to everyone who, someone has system A, system A is for this and that data, and that's if you don't view any other data. But in here you can combine data, for example, different networks. If you are responsible for telecommunications network, but still you would like to see the electricity network or sewage network or whatever. So, so you, can, you can see other data. And then, um, about lessons learned. So standardization is the key to success. So if you don't have standards ready, which you can use, then you should develop those as part of the project. Or if there isn't any sort of a standardization development environment, invent your own. <laughs> so, so that becomes a standard, maybe, later on. Uh, automated quality check, that's of course, that's speeding up thanks a lot, that's important, and that's something I'm sure you can always improve. So you, you get new data, you get new exceptional cases, so. Um, then one thing was that, uh, which is not a surprise, I think, at all, uh, shallow acceptance curve, to put it nicely, so the normal resistance against anything new. It's always the same, you, are, you have absolutely new software, or you have a new version of an old software which is changed a lot, so, so people don't like changes in general. The end users don't like changes, unless it makes their the work a lot easier. So instead of having three buttons, they have only one, so it's easy. But otherwise, they, they, they are always against anything new. Uh, constant monitoring of the entire process chain, that's, that's important, that's one of the keys in here. So everything is actually stored uh, in, in uh, the other case in Oracle, and in the other case in, in uh, post uh, database. And as said, bills paid are only after documentation has been accepted, so that's a good trick to, to get high quality data. Is that the only button? <laughs> Excuse me? Is that the only button? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> pay, pay bill. <laughs> yes. 
So, thank you. Uh, any questions? Yuri Lipov will join me for to answer any, any, any tricky questions. Here's one. You mentioned that um, I can just yell. You, you mentioned that your object data is your object schemas are dynamic and that you store each of them in the database. And I was curious what that meant in terms of storing the attributes related to the objects. Uh, do you have columns for them or, or how else would you store them? This is clearly for Yuri. <laughs> there is, are two aspects that uh, we uh, convert these uh, CAD file objects, CAD file uh, ele elements into database objects. That is one thing. And the other thing that uh, this um, uh, mapping file that, uh, uh, that uh, controls uh, which uh, CAD file element goes into some CAD file, uh, this database object, it's also held in the database, that, that, that helps sense. But, uh, but uh, in this intermediate database, we don't ha hold any more CAD files, but there are, uh, they are, uh, well, uh, well, converted into these uh, database objects we have. But uh, if necessary, attribute data, we, with attribute data, but, uh, this, uh, you get very little attribute data from a CAD file normally. Thank you. Yeah, and in, in, in a typical situation, for example, if we are doing conversion work, it often makes sense to have sort of intermediate data model, which is already maybe in, in the same uh, database or similar database than the target database, so it makes, makes it easier. Any other questions? You said that everything is based on the standardization. How did you set up your standardization? How long it took you, whether you con coordinated with the national policy or not? Uh, approximately seven years. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, then, and, and uh, to have this uh, universal acceptance, that was uh, two more years. So uh, we started back in 2000, and uh, in 2009, we could say that uh, these standards are, have been generally adopted, and uh, practically all these CAD files that are pre produced in Estonia as, uh, service, as, the, as the service, they conform to these, these standards. So something good happened in Estonia except customer getting uh, solutions, but it's also national benefit in here, which is nice. Any other questions? Are you just dealing with CAD files coming in, or are you also dealing with actual survey information from the surveyors themselves, or is it sort of, it's the product that the surveyors deliver to those clients? We are focusing on CAD files. Well, uh, these, uh, all, all the uh, other documentation, this is also goes into the database, but uh, it takes different routes. Well, it's, it, it, it's handled separately. But, uh, well, uh, when we talk about this uh, network data, then uh, this uh, final conversion of this attribute data with, 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 uh, with uh, the information that comes from CAD files, that is uh, more or less manual work, because then you, then you have uh, check that all these uh, well, uh, cables are of the correct type, and you have all these cross sections, and, you, uh, and that, 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 that we cannot ad automate so far. But this, uh, well, uh, this route that uh, takes these uh, CAD files into database, that has been automated. But of course, if you have some some sort of um, equipment specific format which is coming out of the out of equipment, you could develop reader for that if there isn't any, and, and then use that one as well. There's uh, a bit uh, 95 of the per percent of this uh, information that we get is in CAD files, so we're fo focusing on that.
Any more questions? Okay, thank you for all staying awake, I think. I, I, I didn't see anyone sleeping, so that's, that's good. <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you much. very much.